Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is Joey at Charm City Collectibles, also known as Charm City Breaks. I was going to say we break on Facebook and I'm going to do a review of the entire checklist of Bowman. In separate videos, we're going to break it down by division. First, we're going to start off with the National League West. So we're going to go over the Diamondbacks, Rockies, Dodgers, Padres, as well as the San Francisco Giants. But before we get into that, I just want to go over kind of what Beckett is and why I'm going to use Beckett's checklist. They just kind of break down the teams a little bit better than other people. In my personal opinion, they lump the teams together. I think it's an easier to read checklist. There is other places like Break Ninja, as well as you can use Cardboard Connection. I personally use Beckett. I think they have the best checklist online. There's also an option if you don't want to just use the web browser of your choice, whether it's Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, or even Safari. You can use an Excel spreadsheet, pull it up right here, and download it off of Beckett. But let's get into the teams. I'm going to break down all of the guys that have first Bowman in the 2023 Bowman, as well as any rookies that are of significance that have autographs. So let's go over that, starting with the Arizona Diamondbacks. First, we're going to get into the Arizona Diamondbacks here. And looking into their Bowman prospects and their Bowman Chrome prospects are going to be the exact same people. Essentially, they have five guys that have first Bowman in the product that's in the base checklist. Uh, the guy that's not on this list is Jordan Lawler. He's already had his first. It was in 2021 Bowman draft. The other five guys, Drew Jones, Abdias De La Cruz, Ruben Santana, Christian Serta, and Dave Vizion De Los Santos all have first Bowman. What we, I will say is that autograph-wise, Drew Jones is the only one that has autographs. Everybody else does not have autographs. So there's a lot of good prospects, but they don't have autographs. They might have them in 2023 Bowman Chrome. We'll see if that happens. It's kind of what happened with guys like Jackson Churio last year. So we'll see if the same kind of thing does happen. There is obviously Dominic Canzone. And Tim Tawa have autographs. We'll go over those guys as well. And we're going to talk about Corbin Carroll, the rookie that is on the Diamondbacks. But let's get started here with Drew Jones. He's definitely the biggest chase in the product by it's far. He's Andrew big. Jones' son. It's, we're yeah. looking at his numbers right now. He's in a seven-day DL. When he was drafted last year, number two overall, he came into the draft as the number one overall talent. Uh, Jackson Holiday obviously got f picked first by the Baltimore Orioles. He ended up getting picked by the Diamondbacks right after Jackson Holiday. He is an outfielder. His early games this year in single A made some really good defensive plays. Obviously, as you can see, he's not been hitting the ball very, very well. But he does have a decent approach from what it looks like. His on-base percentage is about 100 points higher than his average. Um, he's only played 10 games of professional baseball because of the simple fact that he was hurt last year. 19 years old. He has a all the raw talent. Five tool players, definitely going to be a guy that is going to be a big chase. Not only does he have the name with his dad, he plays a lot like his dad does. He has the frame of his father at six foot four, 180 pounds. He's going to put some meat under those bones the older he gets because he's only a teenager still. Looking at that, we're going to hop into the Diamondbacks pipeline where he's number two behind Jordan Lawler, who, like I said, is in the product, but it's not his first. You can look at his grades. Everything's out of 80 for scouting grades. 55 hits, 60 power. Like I said, a lot of raw power, and he's still going to put some meat on those bones and get that frame a little bit bigger as he gets older. He has a great run. 70 run is very, very fast. Um, that probably puts him in like the top 10 run grade. Great arm, great fielding. No matter what, this guy is going to be a professional player just based on his fielding. He probably fields the ball as well as Christian Pache did coming up. Obviously, Pache never figured out how to hit. Hopefully, Drew Jones does. Uh, some people say he's overhyped. I think the hype is probably realistic, at least from a hype standpoint. We'll see if he develops into a great professional player or not. But Andrew Jones or Drew Jones that he goes by is definitely going to be the biggest chase in the product, if not definitely a top five chase. Uh, it's just, he comes with the name, he comes with the raw talent, and he's really, really young. Great prospect to really go after, but it is going to make the Diamondbacks pretty pricey in breaks. We'll also look at the top 100 where he is, I believe, in the top 10 still. Uh, he's not actually in the top 10, I am mistaken. Drew Jones is at 13. So he's the 13th overall prospect in all of baseball. So obviously scouts and others feel that he is a very good, talented player as well. And that's the top of the class for the Diamondbacks. 
Moving on from Drew Jones, you're going to get Abdias De La Cruz, who we'll look over his numbers right now. Not the best. He's 18 years old in the a rookie affiliate. He got signed to a relatively large contract with De Los Santos and Ruben Santana that we will actually talk about both of those guys here in a second. Uh, he might be in the top 30. We'll double check here. Um... We'll double check here real quick. I don't. Th I think he actually is right outside of the top 30. Yes, he's right outside of the top 30. I think he's like 32 or something like that. But looking at his numbers, he doesn't have great numbers uh, in the sense of the actual statistics are not great. But the Dominican Prospect League hasn't started. He's only played rookie ball. He's an 18-year-old. But he is a big 18-year-old at 6'3", 175 pounds. I think there's a, little, a lot of unknown about him, but they did spend a good chunk of change to get him signed. I believe it was a little bit over a million dollars, a little bit under a million dollars. Um, either way, he came in as a trio, and I do think that he is a guy that can be invested in, but no autograph, just going to be his parallel, so that makes him a little bit interesting. Next, we're going to move on to Ruben Santana, another guy that make him summer league. This guy tore the cover off the ball, 316 average, 436 on base percentage with an 872 OPS. He is in their top... 30 as you can see number 17 they project him to come into the league at 2027 this is what i was talking about as he was a large international signing as well seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in the bonus which is pretty big it's not the biggest that he got offered but that's what i was talking about right here with de la cruz 1.1 million dollars was actually the highest signing out of the three guys they all came together de la cruz nin and Santana and I don't think that Nin actually came up into Bowman yet I think he'll probably maybe be in a Chrome we'll see but those were like the big three signings in the 2022 signing period for the Diamondbacks overall I I do think that Santana and De La Cruz are guys that are worth investing in Santana does not have an autograph in this either I'm hoping they get their autographs in 2023 Bowman Chrome moving on to Christian Serta playing single a ball honestly he was part of a trade that involved David Peralta. He was originally signed by the Rays. The Rays are pretty good at picking up talent and developing them. I think a lot of that's developing them, though. I don't know if they're really the best at selecting who's great, if I'm being honest. They do, love, they do develop other guys' players very, very well. Um, he's a catcher, kind of a stocky frame at six foot tall, 190 pounds. He has decent power numbers. I'm not really 100% sure if he's going to be that great or not. Another guy doesn't have autographs. He's definitely lesser of the other options on the Diamondbacks. Obviously, Drew Jones is the cream of the crop of the guys. But I do think that De La Cruz, Santana, and we're about to go over De Los Santos um, are better options in Serta. But Serta could be a guy that's a long hold. He is a catcher. Looking at the Diamondbacks' depth at catcher, he could get pushed through the organization if he has a couple decent years and probably be up by his about 23. He's not in the top 30, though, right now. Moving on after Serta, we're going to get to Dave Vizion, De Los Santos. I believe that's how you say his name um, with the accents. Uh, I might be a little bit off there. If I am, I apologize. He is his in double A affiliate of the Diamondbacks already. He was raking the last couple years. Even in double A, he struggled a little bit at the back of the year, but he was raking in high A, raking in A at 18 years old. He is actually very high up in the organization, number four. He's projected to come up not this year, but next year. So he'll be about 20 years old when he comes into the league. That is a lot of height. Does not have an autograph, but he has a lot of raw power. 65 grade, that's very high power-wise. One of the reasons why um, I think that he could be a good long stash, ex especially with, look at his home run numbers, 22 dingers last year between single A, high single A, and double A. That's good numbers. He had 106 RBI, so definitely a good power hitter. He does strike out quite a bit, I will say that. That could be a little worrisome. Um, and as you can see, his average and his on-base percentage is very close, meaning he does strike out and he does not walk. Um, those are kind of his concerns, but he does play both corners, third base and first base. Could be a nice sleeper. No autograph in the product, though. Getting into three guys that do have autographs. Obviously, we talked about Drew Jones already. Do not need to talk about him. We're going to talk about three guys that do have autographs for the Diamondbacks. Dominic Cazone, Tim Tawa, and Corbin Carroll. Corbin Carroll is obviously a rookie. We'll talk about him last. Getting into Dominic Cazone here. He's in the AAA affiliate. He's going to be called up this year. He is in the top 30. I think he's like the 23rd or 24th guy. I'm not going to even really go over it. Pretty much, he hit last year. He's not hitting so far this year. 
He's a little bit older. He plays in the corner outfield. They're going to give him his shots to get in the bigs this year more than likely. And if he's not successful, he probably will not get a call back up. He you can see that Tim Tawa is the same exact thing. He's not even hitting good this year at all. He's never really hit great for his career. Um, he is in another outfielder, not in the top 30. He's only playing double A at 24 years old. I think he's projected to come up, not this year, but maybe next year. So he'll be like 25, 26 by the time he comes up. I don't think he's worth a hold. I think he's a guy you could stash him. And like I said, hope he has a good run once he gets in the pros and maybe that's what you do but overall I don't think he's that great then we're going to move on to Corbin Carroll who's a nasty rookie great fielder last year he came into the league tearing the cover off the ball a little bit this year he's batting 280 which is better than the 269 last year he only has what 202 plate appearances 186 at bats overall so far he does have an OPS plus of 129 that's good his OPS is over 800 for his career Lots of potential. Could be a long, long-term all-star. Not long-term and like he might be an all-star in like eight years. Like he legitimately could be an all-star this year. He's that type of player. Great defensively. Has a lot of offensive upside. He's going to be in the outfield for the Diamondbacks for a long time as long as they sign him and keep him happy. And that's actually going to wrap up what we're looking at here for the Diamondbacks. Moving on to the Colorado Rockies as the second team in the NL West, we're actually going to see three guys that have uh, Bowman Chrome prospects in the product. Fernandez has already had his first. He was in last year's Bowman Chrome. We're going to have De uh, Deanne, Jorge, and Juan Brito. I will say that Jorge is still in the Rockies organization. Brito is actually in the Guardians organization. He was part of a trade involving Nolan and Jones coming to the Rockies. So these are going to be the two guys that have first. And autograph-wise, we go down here. They're the only two guys that have Chrome Prospect autographs. So that's going to be the guys. Let's go over each of them real quick. We'll start off with Jorge. Looking at Jorge, absolutely raked. Dominican Summer Leagues last year. He is Cuban. He was a little bit older than most of the guys in Dominican Summer League. So I don't know if it was his age that allowed him to rake. Or if just the fact that he is a really good player. He signed for a ton of money in his signing bonus. And we'll talk about that right now. Going to the prospect pipeline for the Rockies. He's 19th overall in that. He signed for $2.8 million in January of 2022. So the Rockies are definitely serious about this kid. Like I said, he did defect from Cuba in late 2019. And he waited until the bonus pools reset, as it says here, to maximize that amount of money he could get. So he's a little bit older, but a lot of Cubans that come into the league are a little bit older anyways because they defect from Cuba. He's six foot three, 170 pounds, so hopefully he puts on some weight on the wiry frame. Does have a good run, arm, and fielding. Uh, the hit is very good. It seems like he's a good ball to bat guy, good contact hitter. Let's see if he can add some power at the shortstop position. One of those guys I think is going to be a long hold. Uh, the only thing is, 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 does he go the ways of Oscar Colas, where he's a little, by the time he gets in the league, he's a little bit older, so if he doesn't come out just out the gate super, super, super strong, are people going to get a little bit bored about him or not? We'll have to see with that. But that is the breakdown of Jorge. I do think he's a good prospect. We'll go to Juan Brito now. And honestly, the trade for Nolan Jones and Juan Brito, both sides could win. It just seemed to be a straight-up trade, I believe. Uh, there might have been an extra player going the Guardians' way. But Nolan Jones, third baseman for Juan Brito, shortstop. And essentially, this dude rakes too. Like, 295 average, 418 on-base percentage share with an OPS of 850. Yeah, that's pretty much what he's done in his entire minor league career. He is 21 years old already, only playing high A. So he's a little bit older. But honestly, he's always right. Look at his numbers. He's in the high 280s, 290s, 300s, uh, whether he's playing A, A+. Plus. Uh, so that's always very, very good. He is 18th in the Guardians organization right now. Once again, another guy that does not have tremendous power, but looks to have good bat on ball. And essentially, the Guardians seem to be very good at developing guys that play like he does. He, he reminds me a lot, uh, looking at his profile, watching some videos of uh, Andres Jimenez, Looking a lot like uh, Stephen Kwan. Maybe not quite Stephen Kwan. He's kind of a little bit unorthodox in the sense of like he's a freak when it comes to like the fact that he controls the the zone so much. But doesn't have a lot of power. Because, God, I mean, pitchers aren't afraid to throw strikes at Stephen Kwan, I don't think. It's almost like a Ichiro. He's like a very Ichiro light Stephen Kwan is. I think Brito is a guy that can develop really well in the Guardians organization. We'll see how quickly he gets to the league. They're saying a couple years still. So it'll be about 22, 23 when he comes up. And the Guardians seem to push young players up into the league and are okay with that. Um, I do think that 
He's going to have to keep up his numbers to get pushed through the Guardians organization, though. Could be a very good hold. Overall, I think the Rockies have two pretty good guys that have first Bowman in there. The only thing that might affect Berto's value is it because he's on the Guardians now and no longer a Rocky. That could affect his value a little bit. We'll kind of have to see how the market in eBay as well as Facebook groups and stuff kind of go about trying to sell him to see what his market is. After finishing up with the Colorado Rockies, let's move on to the Los Angeles Dodgers. They have a pretty deep checklist here with Bowman Prospect and Bowman Chrome Prospects, as you guys can see. We're going to have everybody on this list other than Samuel Munoz having a first Bowman, and everybody has an autograph other than Junior Garcia. And in place of Junior Garcia, autograph-wise for the Chrome Prospects autograph, we're going to get Damon Keith. I apologize. Logan Wagner does not have an autograph either. There is some guys that are retail exclusive autographs only. We're not going to go over these guys in any of the checklists. Um, if you want to know about the retail exclusive autographs, I'm going to probably do a separate video about those. Maybe on release day, maybe a little bit after. If anybody's interested, you'll have to let me know in the comments down below. But let's get into the list of prospects we got here. Let's start with Logan Wagner and see what we're looking at. Going over to Logan Wagner with no autograph here, 19 years old, rookie affiliate Dodgers. He played in the Arizona Complex League as an 18-year-old last year. They haven't started playing the Arizona Complex League yet this year. Numbers are not terrific. He only had 50 at-bats. Honestly, six RBIs, two stolen bases. He's a third baseman, so maybe he's a little bit speed for third baseman. He is in the Dodgers top 30 at number 27. Um, overall, to me, he's not super impressive. He did get drafted in the sixth round, and he got the second highest bonus for the team in the 2022 draft. Overall, though, I'm not just super that impressed with him looking at some film as well as looking at what his raw numbers are. But we'll see. He was a shortstop converted to third base, switch hitter, seems to have a fluid swing. Uh, could be a long-term hold. The Dodgers do have a very good pipeline right now. They have a lot of older guys at the top of their pipeline, which is log jamming it up a little bit. The Dodgers are always competitive. They're mostly homegrown, but they have so many good guys right now that are homegrown and the pros that it's hard to get through their organization. We'll see if he ends up being used as trade bait. Could be a good long-term hold, though. After Wagner, we have Mero Shindrick Martinus. Um, Martinus is a young kid, 18 years old, 6'3", 121 pounds, 161 pounds, not 121 pounds, I apologize. Shortstop, Hit pretty well. It, it looks like he has a lot of power for his lengthy, wiry build at seven home runs in the Dominican Summer League last year. That is, in 52 games, he hit seven home runs. That's pretty darn good. He's not in their top 30, though, so I'm always kind of interested about why he's not in the top 30. Um, I don't know if he's going to be playing rookie ball again next year in the Dominican Summer League, or maybe they bring him to the Florida uh, Complex League. or the I think they actually play in the Arizona Complex League, not the Florida Complex League because they're a West Coast team. Nonetheless, he looks like he could be really good, but a lot of unknowns here with Martinus. He is going to... He doesn't even have a picture. I don't know what the kid looks like, but I'll tell you what. He's going to have an autograph in this as well. Could be a good long-term hold, 18-year-old. The Dodgers have a lot of these young kids that are going to be guys that should be held on to because you don't know what an 18-year-old is going to turn into. Next up, we're going to have Josu Dapala. Josu Dapala literally tore the cover off the ball. Five home runs, 349 average, 448 on base percentage with a 970 OPS. It's huge, not just big. huge, it's huge yeah. upside. Looking at the top 30s, number 11 in the organization, 60 hit, 55 power. The American that was signed out of the Dominican Republic, his cousins, or his second cousins at least, are Sebastian Telfair. I don't know if you guys remember him or not, played point guard for the Timberwolves as well as Stefan Marbury, who also played. Point guard for the Timberwolves as well as many other teams. Maybe also known as Starberry. I mean, this kid is just going to be filthy. 17 years old still. This is one of the most excited guys that no one's talking about in my personal opinion. That has a ton of upside. I think this is a guy you're going to really have to just hold on to and maybe go after. If his prices aren't that high, I might buy some of them to be honest. Moving on, we are going to Juan Alonso. Juan Alonso, 19 year old playing single A right now and. Uh, for the Quakes, average not great, does seem to have a pretty decent plate approach, he does seem to walk a little bit, the OPS isn't terrific, he's an outfielder, um, he's not in their top 30, just a guy that could be worth a hold, we'll kind of see, he's one of the lesser guys, the Pomanian, one of the lesser guys that is in the prospect list here for the Dodgers. Let's go to uh, Yanir Fernandez, 
Uh, Yanir Fernandez is in high A right now. Another dude that absolutely mashes. 333 with a 385 on base percentage and an 896 OPS so far this year in high A. Last year in A, he raked as well with an 813 OPS. He had 10 home runs as a 19-year-old. He's 20 years old now. He is a guy that is in the top 15 in the organization. The power numbers are 40. That's pretty low for 10 homers last year. I don't know if that is what I would rate him at, but he does have some good bat to ball there with 55 hit. The rest of it is just kind of a little bit above average. He is a little bit shorter in stature. He plays catcher in second base. That's a random combination. But the versatility here could get him up into the league a little bit earlier as a utility guy. That's something the Dodgers do love to do. So we'll see what happens there. Another guy that's very intriguing for me. The Dodgers overall are pretty intriguing as a organization for prospects. As a guy that's going to have his first in here as well as autographs, not only his base first. Next up, we're going to Junior Garcia. Does not have autographs. Not in the top 30, but he's 21-year-old playing in high A. The numbers just don't look fantastic. But he has been in the minor since 2018, and he's a guy that batted real in the low 200s, then bumped it up to the 300 mark, the high 290s, then gets up the high A and batting below the Mendoza line. We'll see what happens this year. If he starts it well again in high A, he could get that push up to double A this year. Maybe see him up there by the time he's like 23, 24 years old. If not, I don't know if he'll be successful. He does not have autographs in the product. But he could just be a guy like when you're collecting the other Dodgers players that you just kind of put him to the side and see what happens with him. I don't think he's going to have a ton of value, especially with no autograph. Then we're going to get to a guy here that's autograph only, no base cards, Damon Keith. Damon Keith is 22 years old already, high A affiliate. Um, He's a top 30 guy in the Dodgers organization, but he's not really raking that much. He does seem to have pretty good power, though, with 17 dingers last year, 12 in A, 5 in high A. But his batting average is very low in high A. I don't know if he adjusts that. I don't know if he can get more bat on ball, more barrels. If he can't, he's probably not going to keep moving up in the organization. But he is number 25th right now. And he's just kind of above average. That normally equates to either he becomes very successful in high A right now or he's just not going to be move up and be stuck. And that's just kind of how minor league baseball works. And that is going to be the Dodgers prospects. Um, I don't see anybody else as kind of crazy. Uh, rookie autograph wise, I don't believe they have anybody. I think that, um, Miguel Vargas is in the product and in inserts, but he does not have any autographs. Neither does Outman and Outman's been tearing the cover off the baseball. I was going to say, I wish I would have paid the money for him in fantasy in my dynasty league, but I did not. Mistakes are made. Let's move on to the Padres. Moving on to the Padres here, we have three guys that are going to have prospect cards in 2023 Bowman, two of which are going to have first. The other guy already had his first, and he had it in the Chrome last year, Samuel Savala, who was actually a chase card in Chrome or became one as he he, he rakes. I mean, he's a great player. Uh, we're going to have Nerwillian Cedeno as well as Daniel Montesino. Uh, for the two guys that are going to have first that uh, also have autographs in this. And then we're going to have another guy that has just an autograph in Nick Vought. Um, let's go over Norwillian Cedeno first. Let's check out what he's looking like. Norwillian Cedeno here, not hitting well. I was going to say he's high A affiliate, 21 years old. The big thing about him is he is a super utility. plays all over the infield. Right now he is injured. The Venezuelan... Needs to figure out how to use the bat if he wants to stay in the minors and he wants to keep moving up and probably get into the organization of the Padres. They might use him as trade bait as kind of like a Jerickson Provar saying, oh, this guy can play all over the place. Let's use him that way. But in reality, he is still in the top 30. He's number 12 in the organization. Now for the Padres organization and their pipeline, I'm not saying that number 12 is bad, but they also sold the entire farm system for Juan Soto last year. So honestly, I'm not really sure how much that Cedeno would be like even in the top 20 in somebody else's organization as the Padres have a depleted pipeline right now. But overall, he is 12th. I mean, you can't argue with the, with the facts. The facts are the facts. Um, I'm not too impressed with him. I don't think he's a great prospect. The next guy, Daniel Mon 
Modestino is actually a lot more enticing to me, and we'll talk about him right now. So we have Daniel Montesino. I think that's how you say it. It could be Montesino, but I think it's Montesino. He he raked in 2021, and when he got signed as a 17-year-old in the Dominican Summer League, then he had to go undergo Tommy John, so he missed all of the 2022 season. He is a first baseman and an outfielder. He only started to play some first base after he injured his elbow from the outfield, but he got the Tommy John, missed all of 2022. But in that 2021 season, he raked. If he can continue that, he's going to be very, very interesting. Is in the top 30. He is 30 or he is 20th in the top 30. And honestly, like I said, the numbers showed themselves. Absolutely ridiculous numbers. We'll look at them again. He had a 933 OPS in the Dominican Summer League. Four dingers in that league is very impressive. He did have quite a bit of strikeouts, but overall a very good plate approach. Um, they said he had a good walk rate, great on base percentage, as you guys saw here, with a 444 on base percentage. Uh, he is a left handed hitter, left handed thrower. He didn't hurt his arm pitching. He literally threw something from the outfield and blew his arm out, I guess, which is unfortunate. Very enticing guy, probably a long hold, but I actually do like him as somebody that might be uh, an, a get in a lower team as the Padres don't have absolute monsters in this year's Bowman 2023. Going to the last guy on the checklist that only has an autograph in Nick Avat. Looking at him, just not impressive. Honestly, he's 22 years old already. He's still playing rookie ball, or played rookie ball last year and batted 125. He's not in the top 30. I don't even think he's really a guy that's worth holding on to, to be honest. He was drafted 7th round 2022. Maybe he comes in this year in Fuego in rookie ball, maybe gets out of the Florida Complex League or the Arizona Complex League. I think they play in the Arizona Complex League. And maybe he actually kills it, but I highly doubt it. Honestly, this is a guy that I don't know why is the first Bowman in the product other than him being 22 years old already. That wraps up the Padres. We're going to get to the last team in the NL West. It's going to be the San Francisco Giants. Moving on from the Padres to the Giants, the Giants have a very, very interesting checklist as it's not very deep at all. It does have Marco Luciano who's been in like every Bowman since, I don't know, I was like 12 years old. And then you have Averson Artiga. But we do have a guy, Kyle Harrison. He is their number one prospect in the organization. He is a pitcher, a big, a big lefty, throws the ball nice and hard. They also have a guy in Vaughn Brown that's a little bit older, but he has an autograph only. Let's look at both of these guys. We'll start off with Kyle Harrison. Looking at Harrison, he's 21 years old in AAA right now. I mean, you can see four started games. The ERA is a little bit high, but 12 strikes and nine innings pitch. He's a big old lefty at six foot two, 200 pounds, a thick old boy. Um, not super thick, but I mean, honestly, he's just from the time he got drafted in the third round in 2020, he's been moving up the ranks of the Giants organization. He is the number one guy right now. Good fastball, good slider. He'll probably be up this year. Um, he did have first round money, even though I don't think he was a first rounder, he was a third rounder, but they gave him first round money. Um, he'll be up this year. We'll see how he does when he gets called up, but definitely up this year. Very intriguing. Pitchers have been gaining in value. I do like the Kyle Harrison here. It should be very, very interesting what happens with him um, and how people take him as a player, but that's what makes him intriguing. Let's move on to Vaughn Brown. So Vaughn Brown has only an autograph. And honestly, Von Brown is very intriguing. He's a double-A player right now. He is injured currently. He's 24 years old already. Um, he hasn't started playing the season yet. I'm assuming they're going to throw him up in triple-A to start the year. He finished in double-A last year and got injured. We will see if they put him in double-A or if they put him in triple-A. But, dude, look at his numbers. He absolutely raked a 346 batting average with a 437 OBP in single-A. Um, they obviously bumped him off to uh, double-A. He played one game, had two at-bats. He had an over one OPS. So pretty pretty ridiculous. He's fifth in their organization. Good run, lots of power. Now, he is a little bit older, but overall, he was a 10th rounder in 2021. He's just a guy where his numbers are so good, like you have to assume it's going to translate. Is he going to get into the pros this year? Probably not due to injury. Um Pretty much it's just he has to stay healthy. He does strike out a lot, but his numbers, raw numbers are kind of ridiculous, which is why like the Giants are a conundrum. It's a second product in a row where they have a lot of, well, I guess, yeah, draft was the same way, 2022 draft. They have guys with some very good talent, a lot of upside, but they don't have a lot of them. Um, that is where I'm going at with the Giants. They're a conundrum to me. Vaughn is good. Kyle Harrison is good. 
Does that push their price up in breaks? Probably not because they are a little bit older and Harrison's a pitcher. But overall, I think they have pretty good value probably what their price is going to be with a lot of upside in their two players. It's two guys that are in the top five. It's kind of like the Royals in draft where they're a little bit older guys, but I mean, it's top tier guys in their organization. And that's really going to wrap this one up, boys. This is the NL West. And ladies, I don't want to forget any of the ladies out there that are watching the video. But that is all of the prospects in 2023 Bowman for the NL West. Went over five teams, went over everybody. Check out the other divisions that are going to be up. This will be the first one that is posted, so make sure you check out the rest of the divisions as well so you can get an in-depth look at all of the prospects if you're looking for somebody in particular. As well as I will give my top guys, my top chases. We've already kind of talked about one with Drew Jones. As well as I'm going to give you guys some sleepers, some guys that I think might be worth investing in that could end up being nasty that are a little bit younger. I've already talked about that a little bit as well. But we're going to get through the six divisions first, going over all of the teams and everybody. I appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button, as well as leave a comment down below. Share this with any of your friends that collect baseball cards, especially Bowman that might be looking through the checklist like, man, I don't know who to collect or what's an overview looking like. Appreciate that. You guys have a good day and be safe.